between those two objects, well, let's ask the question, but between these two objects, which one has a greater moment of inertia? Uh, yeah, for the, they're not the same mass. So let's suppose that they were the same mass. In other words, divide the moment of inertia by the mass. Then which one has a greater ratio? This one has a greater ratio of moment of inertia divided by the total mass. Uh, so approximately, what is the moment of inertia of this? has a greater moment of inertia. And the same thing would apply here in these three objects. I don't know if these three objects may have the same mass as possible, but mass should drop out, right? Because the only thing that we're concerned with here uh, is gravity. They'll be rolling without slipping, so there's no kinetic friction. And uh, so which one will reach the bottom first, and which one will reach the bottom last? So if you see the objects, there's, there's one that's a hollow cylinder, there's another one that's a disk. And there's another one then, this one in the back, maybe I'll just show it to you, uh, has a, a rolling radius, which is the same as the other two, but it's got a lot more mass concentrated in the center. So this one has the mass concentrated on the outside. This one has the mass distributed uniformly from inside to outside. And this one has quite a bit more mass concentrated in the middle. But now, you might object that they're not all the same mass. They don't feel like they're the same mass. This one feels quite a bit more massive than the others. But the uh, mass should drop out. It's rolling without sliding. So the only force that's producing any work is gravity, which is proportional to the mass. So, okay, so the mass should drop out. OK, so which one's going to reach the bottom first? The far one with the mass in the middle. This one. And which one will reach last? somebody right in simple terms. Explain it to your to somebody who doesn't have a lot of math background or something to yes sir. So we're talking about one, the big blue one or the small little huge one? Oh. What's that? Oh, which one would have won? So we could try it again. You really I'm gonna switch this time, switch it over here, see if I can get this thing to roll. Yeah. It, it is a little hard to get this thing behind the little peg. to get that one going. Oh. I don't know. We'll see. It did look like it looked like they were not uniform, right? But it looked like the uh, little one got going faster and then it slowed down a little bit compared to the other one. All right. 
So you should be able to explain the, uh, the, the outcome of that. Why is it that the hollow cylinder will reach the bottom after the one that's got the mass concentrate, or the solid cylinder, how about that? You should be able to explain that to somebody in simple terms. Okay, so let's go over the, I want you to keep your practice test. The test on Friday is one, one test, and it's just on Friday. Right? I know I talked about splitting it up into two parts that changed my mind. One test on Friday will be uh, have purely imperiometric two uh, problems, which will and what I'm looking to test is like I like on this test, I want to see that you can set up course diagrams, uh, set up the uh, an appropriate coordinate system, determine the equations of motion, put in various constraints like rolling without slipping or that they're connected by a rope or something, um, be able to solve for tensions, accelerations, that sort of stuff. Uh, principally, again, what's new here is the rotational aspect. Second, uh, another problem that I will probably have would be, but in addition will be to do uh, apply the work energy theorem for a rotating system. Similar sort of thing, gotta be able to determine force diagrams. In both cases, you need to determine uh, when you define a coordinate system, you need to specify what is the origin of the coordinates of, if you're having a rotating like an angle. What is the origin? Be able to compute appropriate torques around that center. Uh, and then apply correctly the work energy theorem. This problem didn't have kinetic friction, but I might throw in a problem with kinetic friction. Something that has some slight. Because that would uh, involve work energy. Quite possible. Right. So I'm looking for you to be able to apply the principles to any specific cases, right? And so the, the, this is not it's not going to be these two problems. I'm not going to give you a problem that you've had specifically before because I want you to I want you to be able to figure it out how to apply the principles in these in specific cases. I'll give you a sheet of moments of inertia, and you'll probably have to figure out what is the appropriate moment of inertia for a given problem. Uh, and that depends on your choice of origin, remember. So to that point, I'm going to have you here. Let's do it here in class. I'm going to call on you one at a time. And uh, maybe I'll have you all come up here one at a time to do this. What are we starting with? The yo-yo problem. OK. So you're given the radius, the mass. Uh, I don't remember if I, if I specified, was it a, a hollow? Yo-yo, or is it a solid yo-yo? Didn't specify. It was okay. drawn solid on the test, but it was holding it shaded. Shaded in, that's right. It looks <laughs> shaded, makes it look like a solid, right? Okay, and then uh, you were to determine the uh, tension in the rope, the acceleration, both the linear and angular accelerations of the body in terms of M, G, R, what else might come in? The moment of inertia, which depends on how mass is distributed. Okay, so Mr. Creer, why don't you come up here please and, and do the first step. So I'm going to go, go along the line here. Yes, sir, Mr. Do you mean that the string on the other side? Is that a does, that, does it matter? Yeah, I just, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> only, only it's it's, it's just how you define your coordinate. Does the acceleration Linear or angular acceleration matter yeah, just, to, just, it's to, it's just like right whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah. But otherwise, it doesn't matter. Mr. Kelly. Is this yeah. Can you wait a minute? Let's work on this problem. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Creer is going to diagram the forces. First step, the tension, diagramming forces. Tension from the string acts up okay. from the yo-yo and gravity acts downward okay. from the center of mass. He, he likes a yo-yo on the other side. Isn't it? So. All right, good. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Dishroom, go ahead and sit down. Mr. Dishroom, what's the next step? And come please do it for you. Yeah. Next step is coordinate system. So. Mr. Covington is going to have to live with your coordinate system, so choose one, choose one wisely. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you want me to do the corner system based off what he drew or what you drew? Uh, well, yeah, uh, you, he he, defi he did the force diagram for you, so go ahead and, and go from that. Yeah. Okay. Theta in the clockwise sense and uh, y in the vertical. Okay. Mr. Covington, please come. What's the next step? Uh, isn't that the um, forces, right? He's got the force diagram, so I'm looking for what's the next step? The Newton second equation. Right, the uh, equations of motion, which correspond to Newton's second law for linear motion and the, the corresponding analog for rotation. Um, it'll be for a solid cylinder, which would be one half mi squared. Uh, so it's the moment of inertia for rotation around the center of mass. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Would it be something else if it's like strings on the surface? Would you have to use um, if you take the center of mass? Maybe for you do on the center of mass. Yes. Parallel axis theorem. Yeah. Right. So this is the why. Why am I saying that this? Moment of inertia is the center of mass. The moment of inertia about the center of mass. In other words, they're spinning around the center. Why am I saying that? Anybody guess? Mr. Trimblay. Because the axis of rotation is going through the center of mass. Yeah. Mr. Disharoon defined theta to be spinning around the center of mass. You picked a coordinate system. You chose that. And so the corresponding equation, the, the moment of inertia, is the one that you picked, really, when you chose that to be the case. Okay. Now we could, we're going to come back and do this again a different way. There's another way to do this problem, which would involve the parallel axis theorem. Okay, but first let's do this because I let you choose the coordinate and so this is the result. Okay. Okay, Ms. Shaben, what, uh, what comes next? You want to come up here and do it for us? Uh, well, are we done writing all of the relations that we need in order Negative. to solve it? Right. So what, what else do we need? Hmm. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, it's a nice tablet. Mm -hmm. It writes better than I expected it to. Yeah. Mm, you need that. I bad experience with tablets like mm -hmm. that. Oh. So. Did you use the Okay. Good. Mm. And what, what, what would we call that? Alpha. Uh, <laughs> I mean the equation that you've written. Why? Why is that true? Um, because the linear acceleration is related to the rotational acceleration by the radius. Yeah, I, I might look for something like no slip condition or no. something. The, or string, the string isn't slipping on the surface, right? Okay. Now, uh, can you go up? Does this work? Can I do this with my finger? No. Go up here a second before you go down. Okay. Yeah. Look at the uh, the rotation is in what direction? Clockwise. Clockwise. And the yo-yo, the y acceleration. So alpha is increasing clockwise. A is positive up. So because Mr. Dishiroon chose that coordinate system, you need to insert a negative sign to fit things in what you've got. Otherwise, you'll have a sign error coming in someplace. Okay. All right, Mr. Fanning, why don't you come uh, make make a first step here? First step. Uh, maybe the first thing to do is to write down the unknowns and write down the things that that remain. So, what are the unknowns, and what are the things that remain? How many equations do we have in that first step? So, write down the unknowns. Race option? Yeah, there is. Yeah, sorry. Let's see here. Let's uh, go back right there. Okay, there's an eraser right there. Touch the eraser. Oops. Yeah. There you go. Get rid of that. Yeah. There you go. Okay. So, 
let's look at, at the symbols here. We have M and A and T and G and I and theta or, or alpha for theta double dot and R. So those are all symbols that we have here, the things that we know and, and are looking for. So let's <coughs> All the unknowns. Or Let's see. Is the mass an unknown, and is the radius an unknown? Uh, th those would be things that the experimentalist would set up. In other words, when making a distinction between what's known and what's unknown, what's set up before the whole experiment is allowed to start doing something? So the setup involves picking the yo-yo. So the mass is determined. You know, you pick one of these things for the yo-yo. The radius is determined by the setup. So the mass and the radius are actually known. They're set determined by the experimentalist, the person who set it up, as well as the moment of inertia. Right. So what things then happen as a result of now you let it go, now what happens as a consequence? So M and I and R and G are known. Because you say, I'm going to do it on the surface of the Earth. And I, thought, I give you the object, so that specifies the mass, the radius, and the moment of, moment of inertia. So what's unknown is how it will move, right? And right. The, the things that characterize how it moves would be what? Acceleration. Mm -hmm. Two kinds of two accelerations. One is an angular acceleration. One is a linear acceleration. And, wh and what's the third thing that we don't actually know we have to solve for the remaining symbol here? Well, that's the same as alpha. Theta double dot is alpha. That's another symbol for alpha. So the one that's remaining there is the tension in the rope. And we'll find, in fact, that the tension in the rope is not equal to the weight of the yo-yo. Rather surprising result, but we've seen it happen in other, other situations. Okay. Good. Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, are you available please to how do we well, how do we get started here we've got he noted that we have three unknowns how many equations do we have actually got three three equations and I'm going to I'm going to rewrite this one in terms of alpha because we may confuse ourselves here having two symbols alpha and theta double dot yes sir Maybe it's the same thing, but uh, why isn't the RT negative? Or does it not have to be negative since we moved it? Oh, I'm sorry. That's a good question here. Ah, okay. So notice, uh, the are you talking about the torque? Um, okay. Yeah. So notice he's computing the torque around the center of mass. And remember, you chose that to be the origin. And so I have to turn my arm back this way, right? So I put my fingers out along the radius and then curl my fingers <coughs> along the force and my thumb is pointing into the board. The question is, is that consistent with increased acceleration, accelerating the rotation? And it is with our choice of clockwise and theta that way, right? Can you see that? That the, that the force in this direction is going to make the thing spin faster this way, which is consistent with angular acceleration in that clockwise is positive things. Okay, because I saw the solution that you had made it negative. Well, that depends on choice of coordinates, I think. And, right, and whether it's on the right or the left-hand side and those sorts of things, which... Here it says it's on the left, potentially. Uh, it was 44 from last week. Uh, ah, from, from the homework? Is up and theta, and I, what I need to do there is to draw theta in the counterclockwise direction. That's what I didn't do. I need to 
But what's missing on the solution for the homework problem is I didn't specify that theta is counterclockwise in that figure. And then the, then the signs come out differently than here. Okay, so uh, what do you suggest, Mr. Kelly? We have three equations, three unknowns. How do we proceed? I'm sorry, I said Mr. Jackson. Excuse me, Mr. Jackson. Okay. Uh, How do we proceed? You could solve for t. Okay, so why don't you do that? Scroll it down a little bit. Uh, you uh, uh, yeah, take the pen and just scroll this down a little bit. Okay, you're gonna which which equation are you gonna use to solve for t? Um, the the well, rotation of itself? Yeah, okay. well with all right. So with that plugged in, it's oh okay. So you you used uh, the third equation and substituted into the second equation, mm -hmm. but you made a mistake. Really? Yep. Oh, negative. Yep. You forgot to trace that. Yeah. Okay. I would put it out front because right cool. there it looks like a subtraction. Good point. There you go. Okay, so that combines the second and third equation. And it, it, it eliminated what variable? The um, alpha. Right, it eliminated the angular acceleration. So now we have, so go ahead and sit down. I'll let Mr. Kelly do the next step. We've eliminated alpha, now we need to eliminate either T or A. So we use that equation with which one? Use the pen here and push that up. There you go. Okay. So we're gonna cancel out the T's and solve for A. Okay. Here. Okay. So I'm gonna put an A. Okay. And then over here, we're gonna multiply by one over R to both sides. So that way we get. And the mass in the box. Oh, no, I'm sorry, no mass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is T. Is T. Good. Um, okay. So, we just change the. Can I get a new? Yeah, you can uh, just push this down some more, and that'll give you some more. Oh, okay. Oh, there's a uh -huh. same page. There it is. Um, okay. So if I if I multiply this by negative one right here, okay. Change all the signs and then add the two equations together. Okay. Swanson, why don't you come? Do you want me to leave that? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and finish it. I'll ask. I'll ask Mrs. Swanson a different question. Okay. All right. So that's the acceleration. Uh, we should do a dimensional analysis on this. How about Ms. Swanson? Do you want to do a dimensional analysis on this answer for the acceleration? Do, do a DEH for. Acceleration is meters per second squared. So it's uh, length per time length squared. Length per time squared. Good. Um, That's what it should be. And equals that linear length. That's also length per time. Let's see. That M is the mass. Oh, sorry. I was get back to you. So that. Something like mr squared, some number times mr okay. squared, right? So it's always right. a mass times length squared. Square. 
Okay, so the thing to notice is these two terms in the denominator, because they're added together, they must have the same dimensionality, and you, which you verify because the lengths cancel here. The length squared and the moment of inertia cancels the length squared and the radius squared. And so these two terms have mass, and that mass cancels this mass, and g is an acceleration, and so the acceleration has is disproportional to g too. And the negative sign, of course, when you're doing dimensional analysis, negative signs don't matter. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Averitt, how about if we did a, a common sense check on this? What, what common sense check could you do? Yeah, look at Mr. Kelly's answer here. A couple of common sense things I can think of. By the way, but maybe what would you think of doing? How would you check to see that this makes sense? Right. And moment of inertia, mm -hmm. like if that increases, pretty much it's going to be, in a sense, counteracting the acceleration and making it slow down. Okay. And that other mass, if the mass increases, it's like moment of inertia. So. Good. What if we set the moment of inertia to zero? If moment of inertia is zero, that means it accelerates at g. Yeah. And that means that if it rotates, it's just translating. That's right. How about uh, the sign of this, S-I-G-N sign of this acceleration? Is it positive or negative? Negative because it's going down. And does that make sense? Let's go back to Mr. Dishroom's uh, choice of coordinate system. <laughs> he chose it up, <laughs> right? So the acceleration is down, which is, which is good. Okay. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's you know it should work out in the end, right? At, at, at worst, you can choose an inconvenient coordinate system, uh, and maybe. I could have put it in the sign. Okay. <laughs> so, Mr. Sharp, how about let's see, how much? What what else do we need to do here? We have we found one unknown. We need to find one of the others. So, what's the next step? Uh, find the angular acceleration. Okay. So, please do that for us. Yeah, you can use this. Uh, you can use this. Uh, stop this here. You can you can move it up and down so you can scroll up and down and see if you can figure out where. Pardon me. See if you can uh, find how to find the angular acceleration. I'm not really sure where to find it from. Okay, so, so keep going up. Right there. The no slip condition. Mm -hmm. That the shape of the road for us right. relates the angular acceleration to the linear acceleration. Now we have the linear acceleration. Mr. Kelly just solved this for us, so we can now do this one. This is. Oh, okay, okay. So this A is the. Uh huh. All right. Put negative a. Negative a over r. Right. Okay. And then that. substitute in what, what he has determined for a. All right. And 
additional factor of r. So this is about to be divided into one. Okay. Just to simplify that a little bit. The, the two factors are in the denominator, so we just write them together in the denominator. So we are having dividing. Yeah, you could do that, but you need now a factor of r. Yeah. Okay, so it's i over r squared. That work? Except you need an i over r squared. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Good. That's good. Uh, except oh. there's a double negative sign, so you've lost a negative sign someplace. And so it's, it's indeed negative a over r, and then when you substitute a has a negative sign, now you have a double negative sign, so yeah, you need a positive sign there and then the one just before it. Bottom right here. That one is okay, well. yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I bet. Screwed that up. Good. All right. Uh, Mr. Flanagan, uh, sign of this, the sign of alpha. Is this <laughs> does it, the sign of alpha? Does that make sense that uh, alpha is positive? Yeah. Because of the tr coordinate system chosen. Clockwise, the yo-yo will speed up and will accelerate angularly in the clockwise direction. And the one remaining piece, uh, Mr. Tremblay, how about you want to do the tension for us? You know, we're running out of time here, so I think we need to move on to the next problem. So, uh, but let's go ahead and do that one. So how do you find the tension? Knowing A and alpha. We could have. And what, what reason would there be for not putting in a value for i? Because we didn't know what otherwise. Well, that's one reason. Yeah. If it was some complex mean, like if we say, like, yeah, then we all was actually two disk uh, mine was like a hollow cylinder ish, and then it's like a super duper. I like this answer better. <laughs> <laughs> A little complicated. Right now. So it's a double negative, so it's positive tension, right? There you go. And then it's kind of complicated looking. Does it, uh, is this, if the, uh, notice that the tension is not equal to the weight of the yo-yo. It's not equal to mg. So if we hang this yo-yo from the ceiling, it will not exert, while it's spinning, while it's accelerating, the force exerted on the ceiling is not equal to just mg. Right? So you've determined, in fact, what it should be. In fact, a moment of inertia seems to come into play. Okay, very good. Any questions about that? Okay, so let's we need to speed up a little bit because I want to do this. So let's go over this together. Ah, so here, here, uh, then we could apply the specific moment of inertia. Let's suppose. Oh, that's right. I was going to do this two ways. Let's suppose it's one half m r squared. So it's a solid disk. And simplifying things, then you find the uh, acceleration is uh, with the coordinate system we've chosen here. And then the tension is one third mg. So it might have been simpler to put it in there, but I like leaving it in 
as I. But notice it's the moment of inertia about the center of mass. Now, suppose we had done it a different way. I want to go over this very quickly, so I'll take over here and just uh, um, we did it this way, right? Okay, so let's let's change one thing about this. Only one thing. Let's let's keep Mr. Dishroom's coordinate for y, uh, but let's ch choose a different um, coordinate that reflects instead. Uh, the understanding that momentarily this yo-yo is rotating around the point at which the rope makes contact. So we could talk about rotation around that point, which is different. Okay? So given that, then what are the equations of motion? Well, we have the same one we had before for this, the acceleration in this direction. It's going to be still then uh, T minus mg. But how about the uh, rotational motion? This is a different theta than what we had before. So, two R. pardon? 2R. 2R. Uh, let's see. So we're going to have a moment of inertia. And what is the torque about this moment of inertia, about that point? So there's torque this, there's tension this way, there's gravity this way. So the torque is now going to be, yeah. What force produces a torque? The rope does not produce a torque about that point. Tension, just the gravity alone. R cross mg is into the board. Again, still produces a clockwise acceleration, but it's R mg. Notice that, bingo. This is different. Looks different. We've chosen a different angle. Okay. But notice that also in this equation, in this second equation, there is no tension. So we can actually solve this equation directly. We can go ahead and solve for alpha. Alpha equals Rmg over I. We don't... Now we can substitute, we can now still try to find a relationship, we can, we can still try to find uh, A and the tension, but we've already found alpha without determining the other two. But now the question here is how is this different than what we found before? Different moment of inertia. And what's that moment, what is the appropriate moment of inertia here? It's the center of mass moment of inertia plus mr squared. Use the parallel axis theorem. This is the moment of inertia spinning. We're spinning around a point that pierces the rim of the thing. So, not through the center of mass. Okay? So, you have to be careful here. In this previous problem up here, the way we did it up here, the corresponding correct moment of inertia is the center of mass moment of inertia. You could do the problem this way. But you would not, you would use the parallel axis theorem if you did it this way. So I saw in the homework that I passed out some people who were a little confused and wanted to use the parallel axis theorem to compute the moment of inertia for this problem and not center mass. So they would use three halves mr squared for the moment of inertia here rather than just one half mr squared for a solid disk. Okay? You can see why that now you could, why that's confusing, why that is a confusion. And this, uh, explains, in fact, you could use the parallel axis theorem directly this way. That would be the difference in the two ways of doing it. Okay. Is that clear? Be careful about uh, being conscious of the origin for your rotation coordinate, for the coordinate that is uh, describing the rotation. Be conscious of your choice there. And it, it will affect how you compute the torques and the appropriate moment of inertia. Because if you change a different, if you choose a different origin for the describing the rotation, then you have to compute the torques differently, and you have to compute a different moment of inertia. Okay. All right. So now, the second problem is a work energy problem. Oh, I see. Looks like in my solution I have the pages out of order. Yeah. Sorry about that. Pages are out of order for this. That's confusing. I 
Okay. There we go, check the dimensions, case two, applying the work energy as before. There we go. Okay, pages are out of order, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so this involves uh, doing the same problem in two ways. One is with friction and one without friction. So we do the same rolling, we do the same thing. We put a cylinder on a, on a ramp. In one case we have friction, so it's a rough surface. In the other case we have ice. So we, I don't have, uh, well here's, this is ice, so it's nice and blue. So, there's, so looking at the, examining the forces acting on this, then we have the normal force and gravity and friction, which is going to be in this direction, but we don't know the magnitude of it, right? It's static friction, but the magnitude has to be determined. It would be one of the unknowns if we were to do the force analysis. That would be one of the unknowns. Now we know, though, that the magnitude of that static friction cannot exceed mu s n. But uh, so we, but we, we don't know what its actual value is. It could be something less than that. In fact, it probably will be. Depends on the moment of inertia, actually. Okay. Whereas this problem up here, the forces are simpler. There's the normal force and gravity. And uh, so now we could apply, this would be an interesting problem to do with the other way. Use the force diagram, write the equations of motion, both of these problems, write the equations of motion, find the accelerations, and we would find the, in the first problem with friction, we would find the static friction. The force due to static friction would be one of the unknowns. Okay? So you should be able to figure out how to do that. And you would have a choice there whether I'm going to describe the rotation about the center of mass of the rolling object or about the point of contact. So I have some choices to make. Okay, but this one, because you're not asked to do all that, all you're asked to do is to find the speed that, it, that these two objects are moving at the bottom of the ramp. And so that's really all you're asked to do, so, which means that you could use the work energy theorem. It's probably going to be much faster. Okay. Now, in both cases, how about the, when the object reaches the bottom of the ramp, is the work done the same in the two cases? That doesn't matter. There's no kinetic friction. There's no dissipation. So the work done in both cases is the same. It's going to be mg d sine theta. Oh, I, okay. Got to be careful of having too many names. So I'm going to call alpha the inc inclination of the ramp. Well, we're not going to describe the coordinate system in the, the uh, coordinate system anyway. So, but that's the work done, where d is the distance slid down the ramp. Okay. And using the work energy theorem, this is equal to the change in kinetic energy, and because it starts from rest, it reduces to a problem of just calculating the kinetic energy for the for these two cases, one where it's rolling without slipping, the other where it's, where it's just sliding without rolling. Okay, so in the case where it's rolling without slipping, the kinetic uh, energy is going to be the translational kinetic energy plus one half of the moment of inertia times omega squared, where the center, the uh, moment of inertia is about the center of mass. And we have the no slip condition that omega is v over r. So we could write this then as one half m plus i c m over r squared times v squared. And then that allows us to solve for the velocity from uh, substituting back into the work energy theorem. Okay. Now in the case it's rolling, it's just sliding not rolling at all. It's just sliding down. No friction. Then the kinetic energy is just one half mv squared. And so it's going to have more or less kinetic energy, more or less speed than the case where it's rolling without slipping. Which one will have more speed? 
the sliding will have more speed. You could think of it that the word omega work is being put entirely into translational motion in that case. In the case of rolling without, without slipping, the friction is making it happen so that the work is being distributed among translational and rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so the, the second case is the one that's going to be moving faster. Now, how about omega? Well, once we solve for V here, we can find omega is just V over R. In this case, what is omega? The second case where it's sliding, what is omega? Zero, right? Just, there's no torque acting on that cylinder about the center of mass. Notice that we were we chose the center of mass there. No torque about that. Okay. And notice that we could have computed the uh, rolling without slipping. We could have also used parallel axis theorem, right, and gotten the same result. Um, I, I find it easier to remember this. Total kinetic energy is a combination of the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy, and then to put in the no-slip condition after that. I find that easier to think of. Because the no-slip condition is actually not always true, right? But, but this is always true. Kinetic energy is a combination of translation and rotation. All right. If we're doing both, would you just add in on the MG side the, um, the kinetic uh, friction? Would you just take that away from MG side if you had to do that? If you had kinetic friction? Yeah. Okay. So that's a little bit like the problem where we had, um, I mean, it's slipping. If it, that's a little bit like the problem that we did in class where we had the ball starting to move in this direction. It's sliding. Then there's kinetic friction present. And so it's got to start spinning up and slowing down in a linear motion until they match to the most of condition. So that's actually a fairly complicated problem on the ramp, right? Do that now on the ramp just makes it another level harder uh, because it, now, whereas what we did in class, you expect uniform linear translation without kinetic friction. With kinetic friction, it's slowing down and spinning up. Now we've got this thing on a ramp, and it makes it one more, one level, a little more difficult. Um, I'm glad I don't worry about that for this test. Yeah, no, I'm not going to make it that hard. That's an interesting problem to try to do. I'd be happy to see somebody wanting to try that for extra credit. That'd be fun. But I don't think I'm going to give you a, a question like that on the test. Uh, just too many layers of complexity uh, at the same time. In that one. Okay, test in here on Friday. And then uh, Chapter 8, first uh, homework set is due on Monday. I want to see everybody make an A on this test. Oh. I want to see that for every test, but this one I really want. Oh, or else. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>